Hey everybody, so Mr. Pish Posh and I are on our way to the post office, running an errand or two, and of course we're going to hit a thrift store. Of we course. thought we would hit our little clearance center. We call it the bins, it's not exactly the bins that most people are used to, but it is this tiny clearance center. And you've seen my our finds, you know, over the last year on YouTube, stuff we find there. So we thought it would be interesting to just do a mini challenge today at the clearance center and we'll each what do we want to do just each get do we want to have a number of things or just we each pick make our picks and How then five items each five items each like we can buy more than five yeah we can we buy more to. than five but... but then we'll pick five items each and see whose profit will be higher sounds good all righty we're gonna go do that we'll take you along and let you know Goods. How do you think you did? Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. We'll find out when I do a little research. Right. That's what I was thinking. Okay. So how do you think you did, honey? I asked um, you in the in the store, but yeah. how was the day at the bins, the clearance center? Okay. So the hats were awesome. The hat bin was full. I saw a Patagonia hat. That I got, got two Patagonia hats. Oh. They're pretty dirty. Yeah. But I'm gonna try to wash them. But they are older hats, so that could be good. That could be good. I mean, with the bins, you know how it is. It's kind of a big unknown. Mm -hmm. So I just grabbed things that looked half decent. Mm -hmm. um, I've got an old NASA hat. It's got a foam front on the back, but it's definitely vintage. Again, foam front on the back? Well, the front oh. panel is foam on is the back. foam on the inside. Inside, okay. Um, I'm just messing with you. Thanks. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, wasn't too much good stuff in the glasswares or belts or anything. No, like the places were empty. that I have gotten good scores, like before, were pretty lame. So I just kind of went, I went into clothing. She brought out a bunch of new dresses yeah. and things. And so even that, like you said, it's the bin. So I'm, yeah. I grab things that I don't even really know that much about if it just looks interesting. Right. And then I am just like for the challenge, I think probably your hats will do, yeah. do better than the dresses <laughs> that I found. I did find one brand I have to research, like the piece doesn't look that interesting, but I have to double check the label says what I think it says, yeah. but we'll, sh we'll show you what we're going to do is instead of showing you all the junk that we ended up getting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Nothing I got was junk. Yeah, it no. is. It's a, we come home with too much it could junk. Be. I mean, right? you know, you just, you, you take a chance. I found like a glass. Uh, it's like, it's got some sort of liquor brand on right. it but it's one of those tall slim glasses mm -hmm. there's no comps that i could find in the store mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. so again yeah it could be junk it might get redonated right but sometimes those little i've gotten glassware from the bins like that so that's something to look at is just you know check it real quick because sometimes martini glasses or something that has the name mm. of the brand can be good and like that at the bins it's almost free right yeah, so we paid that box that you saw that we got. We paid seven, uh, eight dollars for that box, and um, yeah, I. So what we're gonna do is, like I said I, before, I was interrupted. <laughs> was we? I'm not gonna. We're not gonna show you every little single thing, but the stuff that doesn't turn out to be worth anything, we'll just pick our five items, and then we'll show you those five items, and then we'll show you comps on those five items, and we'll add them up and see how it goes. Okay. Sounds good. So this is where it got interesting. We got home and we looked at all of our items. Like we said, we were going to from, for our challenge from the clearance center and found out there was really nothing very good or very exciting in our finds. And so we were like, how can we even do this challenge or settle this challenge? Honestly, there were so many different things that just didn't have comps. Like 
we know we can sell them, right, honey? Yeah, they're <clears throat> so they will sell most likely bread and butter right. pricing, right? But nothing exceptional. Nothing. We couldn't. Yeah, there wasn't anything like I. We were excited to share with you guys very much, uh, you know, or anything like that. So we did pivot in our challenge a little bit. So I'll just show you a couple of the things from the bins just to give you an idea. This is probably the most interesting thing that I ended up pulling out of the bins was this handkerchief bandana um, from the 1984 Olympics. And there are comps for this. It's, I mean, the only good thing it's new with tags, right? And so there are comps like 10 bucks or 12 bucks, $12, something like that. So that was probably the highlight <laughs> of my find. <clears throat> and then just what I mean is like, I found this dress which is great. I didn't pay much for it, right? It's Carol Little. It's a wool blend. It's a bodycon. And it's very interesting. And it'll sell. I mean, even if I got $25 for it, it just, it, you know, I can find bodycon dresses by Carol Little in different colors. I can find red dresses. I just don't see this exact dress, right? So I can't, as part of the challenge, be like, hey, I can definitively say this dress sells for so much, right? And then in your stuff, do you want me to just- Yeah, you can just talk about it. Talk about <clears> it. <throat> mm -hmm. So in the hats, really, honestly, a lot of the hats, again, no comps, will probably sell just bread and butter kind of thing. But we did, you did find this hat, kind of cadet style, right? Military mm -hmm. style, but with the flower. And this is the brand. We wanted to mention it because I have sold a couple shirts in this brand, Stormy Cromer, that surprised us. Right. One was denim or chambray, I think. One was <laughs> flannel, I think. But anyway, um, it's a brand they sold or do, still sell they at still REI. Sell. REI. So that kind of, I had just never heard of the brand when I found the shirt and was surprised at comps. And so it, so, it reminds me of, it just reminds me of kind of a Filson mm -hmm. brand, um, really good quality, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, but not quite as yeah. desirable, but still and those hats, we sold a hat like that um, by a different maker and they're, they're pretty yeah, what popular. Are, what were comps on that? On that hat? Yeah. Um, that hat could go between 35 and 45 maybe. Yeah, we'll throw some comps up on the screen too. But it was at the bins, so that's... And we found the name of it and everything like yeah. that, so... I think it's called Pedal Pusher. Pedal Pusher. So it was <clears throat> it was good, but as you can see, we do have a table full of stuff and this is where the pivot comes in. So instead of showing you a bunch of boring things from the bins that we're not excited about, we took the opportunity together to also go to our ongoing estate sale. Now I've shown you things that have sold to where I got some of the glassy babies, different things like that. Um, and so it's kind of a fun little spot right now. Now we did end up getting some things there and we are just like, some of the things just shocked us when we got home as to, you know, how, what we actually found that day. So I'm gonna start with my kind of duds. <laughs> <laughs> Cause once you're, we were in it and we were getting, I don't know, kind of emotion, I, you know, I was emotional buying. I was, it was exciting. We was just like, oh, this is cool. I'm gonna buy this, right? So I'm gonna start with those mistakes. Now. These are a pair of coach, like ballet flats. Um, and I have no qualms about their authenticity or anything like this. It's just, they've been there a while and I passed over them many, many times. They were only $4 and then I, they were moved into a different spot in the room. And so I looked at them again and I was like, oh, for $4, someone will, you know, someone will pay $25 for these. And then I got home and realized the reason I had passed them months ago is there's some damage. Now that part probably can be glued or I'll just say, forget it, whatever. I have not yet decided. Then the next thing I did that I kind of regretted <laughs> was this bin of, uh, it's just mostly cups and saucers, but it's Mikasa English countryside and it's cups and saucers. And the reason I picked it up was mostly for this little jug that was in there. And I picked that because it says Spode England on there. So I was like, oh, a Spode little jug pitcher. That's really cool. Well, I should have 
not shopped emotionally. I should have stopped and really Google lensed it and looked it up because it's worth about $20. Not super exciting. I'll still profit. This whole thing was $8. You know, I'll still profit by the time all is said and done. And these do sell. It's just like they don't sell for a ton. There's 16 of them. And so we could... I mean, shipping all of them, right, honey, would be kind of a pain altogether. Altogether, yes. So if we broke it into smaller lots, mm -hmm. it was looking like four, four to five, four, you know, a set of four was going for like 20 to $25, <clears throat> right? And so multiply it by four, you can end up with $100 at the end of it. But that's a lot of packing material and that's a lot of right. labor for kind of not a great <clears throat> return. So we're going to just try these at the yard sale coming up and just see if we can move these quickly, <laughs> get some money back, move them quickly. Cause they are a nice set. They're and just... I will list this in my Ruby lane shop. Most likely it's very nice. I found the name of it and everything. I'll put a comp up on the screen now. And then this is kind of along the similar lines. Um, so this set is Balik. It's Irish. And so some Balik can do really well. This just turns out to be not very exciting as well. <laughs> so I paid $5 for that set and same thing. It'll, I'll probably list it like 15 or something like that. So not as exciting as I thought. I should have stopped and looked those things up. Now this ended up being kind of a fun little find. So I've talked about, so it says, well, I don't even want to say that out loud. Pen. I have a feeling the G is not a G. Penhaligons? Or is it Penhalig Halion? <laughs> yeah, Penhaligons. Penhaligons <clears throat> in London. Um, anyway, so you open it up and it's uh, perfumes. And so it there's a paper underneath and it mentions, oh, here we go, scents for ladies and gents. And so some are more used than others, but I found a comp same tin very beat up tin probably oh they stink so bad um so why'd you open it <laughs> woo. um you know same level of usage and those you know the whole thing had sold for 67 dollars around that on ebay so that is a good thing so the place I, we've talked about this ongoing estate sale before and the estate that they're working on right now it's so interesting like you, you always can tell it's all from the same estate and it's several um, storage units that they're kind of just working their way through. And the woman collected glassware, pottery, what else, honey? She candles. loved candles, <clears throat> candle holders, anything ethnic. So there's, there's Native American stuff, there's African stuff, there's Asian items. Yeah, basically very So it's very diverse. like, there's a lot of stuff that you <clears throat> see is labeled like from Pier 1. It reminds me of shopping for our wedding registry in Pier 1 in 1999. <laughs> and so, and it's a lot of it's from back then, right? But she also loved TJ Maxx. So there's perfumes and there's candles, like we said, there's makeups and, you know, all sorts of different things. But what's interesting is that there's that, like right next to, there'll be something like we found mid-century Blanco, right? Is that the word I want? I think so. Um, I always get, I, when I go to say it, Blendo pops in my head, but Blanco, right? So you might have mid-century Blanco right next to a TJ Maxx votive, right? So it's really, I think, taught us a lot as we go through it because there's real antiques mixed in with made to look old stuff from Pier One and and places like that. So it's been a challenge for us to figure out the difference. So we like to pick up the pottery in different pieces. Um, you know, this one, it was only $4. We've been doing pretty good with studio pottery from there and it's signed. Is it Ina? Ina Koch. Ina Koch, Hawaii. So we're like, well, at least we didn't stop to look it up. We figured at least it has a name. Studio Pottery does pretty well. And other pieces. Oh, there is a whale in there. Mm, yep. There is. Two of them. Yeah. So that's cool because that when I good. was doing research, 
the ones that had animals like dolphins and things yeah were on the higher end of the pricing okay and what's our range of pricing honey uh so real hard to find comps right. but yeah from what i found um Inukach, probably between 25 and 45 okay sounds good and then the glassware <clears throat> is my find yep and i spotted these across the room do we have a good background for them um, are they showing up just just hold it up again you know it's just like that the base on them they're really nice mm -hmm. glassware right and so i was like oh they have got to be something so we flipped it over and your eyesight was better than mine and you can you don't have to try to get it on camera you're not going to see it i can always pop up a picture um rosenthal is the glass and the pattern is called skull s-k-a-l scal skull and um comps i have to go in a little bit deeper i'll put a comp up on the screen um as far as size because they come in different sizes and so i want to comp this exact glass but i don't think there were any listed currently they were all in solds mm -hmm. and single glasses different shapes and sizes were between 50 and 70 dollars a piece on that and so we paid a dollar we have eight of them and we paid a dollar a piece on that glassware we just said if we were fancier we would keep them <laughs> if we didn't have boys if we didn't have two boys we <clears throat> would keep them um anyway that is what those were mostly the stuff that I found. I'm going to switch it over to you, hon. Okay? You want to talk about it? I thought stuff? I found the Eno Koch. Are you trying to pull that into your part of the challenge? No, you didn't. No, they were not challenging. <laughs> we're not challenging. Oh, the challenge is over? No. Because you know I'm going to win? Well, you won, obviously. <laughs> we talked about that. Already. I know we did. That I'm you, just messing with you. No, you had already won with, your, with, the, with that stuff. Ooh, that stuff. And so... <clears throat> okay. Um, anyway, I was going to just let you talk. Okay. I mean, you can do it. Really? Mm hmm Okay. Alrighty. So there are a few things that we still don't know about yet. We have this votive holder. It's kind of amberina. It's got red and orange coloring, and it's a satin finish to it, not glossy, but the bottom is... I don't know how you describe that. It's, it doesn't look commercial. It looks, you know, I don't know. It looks like it should have a signature in the bottom, but it doesn't. So we'll go to Facebook to a glass group and we'll try to narrow down what that is, if it's anything. Same thing, we've got a couple more studio pottery pieces. This gourd shaped one does have like a little mark here and then maybe here. Mm -hmm. It's the same mark. So I'll try Studio Potio, Studio Pottery Group and see about that. Now this one has a mark here that could just be initials. It's kind of like, there's no mark on the bottom. That could be initials or it's characters. So when you Google lens, similar pieces come up as Japanese, which could fit in with her, the whole aesthetic that right. she had with her stuff. <clears throat> um, or it's just studio pottery. So I think I'll start in the studio pottery group. And if they say, oh, that's Asian or whatever, I'll switch it over to another group. And we'll try to figure that out. So I'm going to pop in here now really quick for an update, a research update. We're still working on some of these pieces and trying to figure it out. But I did get an answer on this vase from the studio pottery uh, identification group on Facebook for United States Pottery. And it turns out that this little mark down here is a J and an M. And so it got identified fairly quickly as Joel, and I don't know how to say it, if it's Magan or Megan or Majin. Um, he is a potter, was a potter, he's passed away, but um, he was a potter who was from California. So, and he was inspired by Japanese pottery. So um, that's kind of probably why that type of style was showing up in my Google Lens results. So I just wanted to share that real quick. I, the only comp I found, well, not the only comp, I did find a few comps. There was nothing currently on eBay, even in the last few months, but on WorthPoint, I found a few. 
And I did find a similar, one with a similar treatment, similar finish, just a different shape and a little bit smaller, sold for $55 on eBay. I don't even know how long ago. And then in this, the pottery group, um, someone mentioned that his daughter is looking for pieces and they suggested I reach out to her, which I totally would. Um, I don't think she's in that group anymore. So I'm going to put it on eBay and maybe she'll be, since it'll probably be the only one on there, um, maybe she'll be the one who reaches out to get it. So the only other thing I found out, this kind of cracks me up. I don't have it down here, but the red little votive thing. I'm thinking now it's not even glass. So, so I put it in the glass group and like, how do you like mess up whether something is glass or not? I think it's a type of resin. So somebody in the glass group was like, are you sure it's glass? Are you sure it's not resin? Cause in one of my close up pictures, you can see like marks in it. And it's so weird because it's cold. Like it feels cold in my hand. Um, if you tap parts, like if you tap it, it like ding, ding, right? So I didn't even like, it didn't even enter my head that it wasn't glass. I just thought it was a satin finish to the glass. And I got looking at it again and I got feeling it again. And I'm like, it totally looks like glass, but I think it's resin. So that's kind of silly, but so that's probably not even vintage or maybe 90s. Y2K vintage, 2000s vintage. So that's what I've learned so far. I then this one could be amazing. Okay, there's a little fish. It does have some crazing. Um, I remember you picked this one up. Mm -hmm. You show the back, yeah. Yeah, because you were like, this is old, but we don't know, like we ha don't have a lot of experience with Asian <laughs> antiques, really? like Not real haven't. antiques, yeah. No. Just like Udagiri stuff from maybe the right. 50s and 60s. Yeah, mid-century Japan right. stuff. Um, so we really don't know anything. It just sometimes you can feel age, you know, with experience. But there's a Facebook group for that. Yep. <laughs> and we did Google Lens comes up with some Celadon wear and um, Chinese and then they call it twin fish, mm -hmm. right? And then there's a there was another name. Long Quan. Long Quan. And so similar ones, like we're talking hundreds and thousands. So uh, one that was missing a huge chunk on the rim. Yeah. Sold on eBay for $99. Right. And then another one that looked similar mm -hmm. sold at auction for 560. Right. But then there are some that are listed you know, on eBay or on actual Sotheby's and right. invaluables for thousands of dollars. So it's kind of a right. big unknown. It's a big unknown. And we have to, I don't know if we looked at like size, you know, mm -hmm. like it's about the same size, about the same size mm -hmm. for those. Okay. So anyway, that could be, you want to stay tuned on that one. <laughs> so if Antiques Roadshow is coming to Kalispell, <laughs> we'll be bringing our twin fish dish. I know, crazy. And that's what I'm talking about. Like this is right next to like a TJ Maxx with still with a TJ Maxx sticker on yeah. it, you know? So right. we're, we're trying to learn as we go and kind of just take chances on some things. We picked up, I'll just mention these, Moleskin. It was $3. She did love... A good journal and stationery and things like that. Uh, moleskins are kind of pricey, so yeah, like at Barnes and Nobles, they're not cheap, and that's three dollars. Don't I seem to recall there being an issue selling those? No, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, that's I'm for just me. saying I, for the for yeah. the audience. To, oh right. To be careful <clears throat> selling those. Then I just picked up these. Um, it's just vintage stationery. It has an airmail look, but there is a maker, Crane and Company, from Massachusetts. You know, 50 cents a piece. I'll throw them together for $15 or something like that and just see if somebody wants those. Easy to ship. And we're going to talk about this okay. hammer. Now, now you have to do the Tim Allen grunt. Oh, while no. You, no, I'm sorry. That. <laughs> what is it? I, I can talk about that if yes. you want. Okay. Well, you come stand over here because I, I don't need to share our groceries. <laughs> okay, so um, if you watched Home Improvement, you know Tim Allen. So when I saw the hammer, I'm always looking for just tools and it has a unique shape to it. So it caught my eye. I do not know the brand. It's RRR. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen that. But then I noticed here, 
it says Tim Allen Signature Tools. Um, and it's got his signature. Yep. Um, it actually still has the tag, which is kind of cool. It's definitely been used, but not terribly. Mm -hmm. So this hammer uh, was $8 and comps on it anywhere from 50 to potentially $90. Okay. Depending on condition. Cool. Um, most of them, there's only two listed. Uh-huh. And all the others are sold. So that's okay. really good. Yep, that's very good. Um, so then there was this. This is a Sony Walkman. Uh, it's just a plastic model, but it's mm -hmm. in really good condition. And it has the headphones with it. And so if you look at the, the uh, model number. Mm -hmm. So I tested it, and, you know, these do pretty well. If they're new in package, it could be over $100. Right. $150. Um, but this one, even in the condition it's in, let me look at me, is between 65 and 75. Really? Okay. And I tested it and everything works. It's got the belt clip. Sometimes that's missing. Right. And then the battery case was clean. Okay. A lot of times they're not. Right. Okay. And so you're best for last. Best for last. Unless the Celadon dish well, that's is true. better. That could be better. But that's a big unknown. And right. this is a known. Okay, hold um, that up. So what we have here is another Walkman. A Sony Walkman, uh, and the model number is DD9. Okay, and it's metal. It's a metal case. Okay, so that's that's just been my kind of go-to guide. Like if I find Sony Walkmans and they're metal, they generally are worth more. Yep. Mm -hmm. But like we said, the plastic one still has value, and I still will look up plastic ones. Oh yeah. But the metal ones get me excited when I find them. Oh, I mean this. <laughs> so that one was in a basket in a bag, a Ziploc baggie. And I thought, oh, cool. You know, it could mm -hmm. be 25 And that $30. was like five bucks or something. Five dollars. So then I was doing another walkthrough and I looked on a shelf. And then this was sitting on the shelf in the baggie. And as soon as I touched it and felt the weight. Uh-huh. And then when I saw it was a Sony, um, kind of got excited. So it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I tested it out on um, the battery compartment, had a battery in it um, that was crusty. Right. Um, so I did what I could to test it, see if I could run some uh, AC power through the port here. doesn't seem to work. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to matter because with the case, mm -hmm. a lot of them sell without cases. So having the case and parts not working um, based on Terapeak, we're looking at between 600 for the low price. 600 people. 600. And that one, it actually said junk right. in the title because it was dirty and uh -huh. gross. Uh -huh. That sold for 600. Um, ones in this condition, parts not working, sell between eight to $1,200. Crazy. And the interesting thing is, is there's a bunch of them listed that work. Mm -hmm. And they're in the eighteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar range. They're mm -hmm. not selling. Mm -hmm. All the ones in in sold, most of the ones in sold, I should say, are actually parts. Are yeah, not working. Yeah. So the fact that it doesn't work might actually help us sell it faster than if it was working. Right. So go figure. Right. So that's it. All right. So here. Okay, so the day didn't go quite as we planned. Like I kind of indicated in our in our title of our video. We started out to try to do a challenge and it was kind of a bust, but we pivoted and did much better by going to another location, <laughs> <laughs> paying a little bit more. We didn't just pay $8 for this, um, but Mr. Pish Posh was the clear winner on this one. <laughs> if we're still gonna call it, like his stuff was probably still more valuable once it all gets sold you know, he found more items. I mean, we had talked about oh, doing five items. Or the whatever, challenge thing was just... The challenge just... Pfft, it was a bust. And so we'll do it again at the bins. <clears throat> um, you know, we want to try it again and have it actually work out. Um, but it was just kind of fun to kind of pivot and do this and then realize, oh my goodness, we found some really potentially really good things that we wanted to share with you guys. So... So anyway, I hope you guys are doing great. We're gonna have, I have some more things that I have found recently. We've done a little bit more thrifting out of town. And so I do have some vintage things that I'm gonna share with you in the next few days or weeks or whatever. And I've got some uh, more what's olds for you and other stuff. So hope you guys are doing great and we'll talk to you later.